Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is video number two of three um, on uh, charging supercapacitors with solar cells. Now I'm showing you a, a few different ways of going about matching your solar cells to your, uh, to your supercapacitor or supercapacitor bank. I'm showing you easy ways, I'm showing you more difficult ways, I'm showing you efficient ways, I'm showing you not so efficient ways. Uh, the first video is linked below, this is a continuation. So what we've got here is we've got a different solar cell. In the first, solar, in the first video, we used a 10-volt solar cell. And in this case, we're using a 7-volt solar cell. And we're using two series supercapacitors. Both are rated for 2.7 volts at 60 farads each. When we place them in series, we can actually boost the charge voltage by adding 2.7 to 2.7, which is 5.4 volts. However, when we put two supercapacitors in series, uh, if they're equal of equal value relative to their capacitance, we half the capacitance. So we double the charge voltage, half the capacitance. So our bank, our bank property, our bank value is 5.4 volts at 30 farads. However, we've got seven a seven volt solar cell, which obviously will overcharge our 5.4 volt bank. And as well, as we talked about in the first video, uh, considering we don't have any balancing circuitry, we're going to want to charge our bank to about 80 percent to ensure the safety of the supercapacitors. Now, uh, I have an instructable link below in case you want to learn more about supercapacitors, but uh, usually you'd want to have balancing circuitry on each capacitor. However, balancing circuitry is expensive and it's difficult to manufacture. So, most cases, this may be a little bit Mickey Mouse, but it's completely workable, it's completely safe. So, what, what you'll notice here is in the first video we used one diode. And the purpose of the diode is to allow power to flow from the solar panel into the supercapacitor bank and make ensure that, if, say the sun goes down, we're still connected, that power does not flow back through the diode through our solar cell because our solar, solar cell will have leakage to ground. So if we didn't have diodes, there would be some leakage and we'd lose some of our charge. But in this case, we've got three diodes in series. Now, this still does the same, uh, the same uh, action. It blocks power from... Uh, from leaking back through the solar cell. However, this is doing something else. What we have across each diode is a r roughly a 0.7 volt drop. So after this diode in the sun, we should see roughly 6.3 volts. After the second diode with another 0.7 volt drop, we should see roughly 5.6 volts. After our third diode with another 0.7 volt drop, we should see roughly 4.9 volts. Now this is all give or take because there's tolerances on the uh, there's tolerances on the solar cell, on each diode, there will be different drops, but within the 7.7 volt range. So if we see roughly 5 volts here, that should be safe enough to charge our 5.4 volt bank safely. Ideally, we'd want a little bit less than 5 volts, but this should be perfectly safe. So what we've done is we haven't matched our solar cell to our capacitor bank. We're going to talk about that in the third video. But what we have done is we've, been, we've used diodes to compensate for the difference between the solar cell voltage and our capacitor bank voltage. So when we go outside in just a second, I'm going to connect my digital multimeter here, uh, positive probe here, and negative probe here. And we're going to connect it before we add our capacitor, our capacitor bank and after. Now, once we, uh, if, before we add the capacitor bank, if we connect our DMM here and here, what we'll see is we'll see the uh, the solar cell voltage after our drops, and we'll verify exactly what voltage we see. And I'm expecting to see, I, I don't know, between 4.8 and 5.2 volts. Um, and hopefully it'll be in the 5 volt range, and we'll be able to literally connect our capacitor bank and walk away, have a beer, you know what I mean, whatever you want, and allow for them to charge on their own safely. After we uh, measure this, to ensure that we have a safe voltage here, we'll connect our capacitor bank. Now, as soon as we connect our capacitor bank, what's going to happen is, and this is explained also in the video link below the first video, this capacitor bank, bank is going to look like a dead short. So, more or less, as if we shorted the positive of the solar cell to the negative solar cell. And that's because it's, it has such a low ESR, internal resistance, that it just consumes all the power that's being consumed here. And because the solar cell can't support all of that current, it drops the voltage to the uh, to the level of the charge on the supercapacitors. So we'll slowly see this bank go from, say, 0 volts, slowly up to 5.4 volts after some time. And once it gets there, it should settle in the 5 volt range. Uh, and yeah, so let's go outside and let's have a, let's do, run a couple tests. Before we do that, let's look at our, our, uh, the back of our solar cell. 
Now what I've got here is three diodes placed in series, soldered in series, and this is our new positive lead after the diode. So this is where all the drops will be. The drops will be along this little uh, series diode bank. This is the negative, and what we're going to do is we're going to charge this little 30 farad 5.4 volt capacitor bank, and we're going to uh, we're just going to leave it in the sun for for a little while and see what happens. And now it's charging. Our series, uh, the, our series charge on the caps prior to connection was about 1.2 volts. And in this gorgeous sunny day, it's charging quite quickly. So I imagine it would probably take I don't know, 10-15 minutes at this uh, pace. So I'm going to turn off the video and uh, I'll turn it back on when we're closer to 5 volts. Needed to change the scenery because the, uh, the sun was not in an optimal position. So I put this on my front stoop and left it for about an hour, went downstairs, did some work, came back and it's, it was sitting at around 4.71 volts. And it's still climbing, but I imagine it'll taper off at around 4.78 to 4.95 volts. Um, and then it'll just stop charging because of the diodes. The uh, so those supercapacitors are, are safely charged. Everything's hunky dory. Um, nothing to worry about. In the next video, I'm going to talk about matching a uh, uh, matching your solar cell specific to your supercapacitor bank. But this video, I just wanted to show you a different way of going about it. Uh, in any case, thanks for watching. In my next video, we'll make sure that we do something fun with the power harnessed in our supercapacitors.